63 shows a circuit like this. There's a 24 volt battery here, which is feeding a circuit consisting of uh, two 3 ohm resistors here and a 5 and a 1 ohm resistor over here. And it asks you several questions. Uh, in particular, the first one is how much current does the battery supply to the circuit? And then what is the potential difference across A and B? Now, the thing about A and B is there's a switch that's connecting them like this. And so when the switch is open, obviously switch A and B are sort of independent. But when it's closed, well, something else can happen. So what we'll do first is look at the circuit when the switch is open like this and see what we can get. So when the switch is open here, you can just forget it's there entirely and you don't have to worry about it at all. And so if I do that, what I see of this circuit when the switch is open like that is something like this. The battery is still there. Um, and then there's a one 3 ohm resistor here, another 3 ohm resistor here, and it sort of looks like this. Another resistor there, and so the resistance values, of course, there's a 3, there's a 3, there's a 5, and a 1. That's what the circuit looks like. Now, if I look carefully at it once again here, these two 3s are in series, and the 5 and the 1 are in series here, so this definitely looks like a situation like this here, where the two 3s in series give me a 6, and the 5 and the 1 also give a 6. And so now you're looking at the circuit where you still have the 24-volt battery, but now it's feeding two equipment resistors, two 6s in parallel. So if I combine two 6s in parallel using the resistance combination equation here, I believe I'll get something like a 3-ohm resistor here. So what I'll get then is a 24-volt battery driving a single 3-ohm resistor right there. And the current comes pretty, pretty easily from Ohm's law over here. Um, current in particular is 24 divided by 3. It's going to be something like 8 amps, which is uh, quite a lot of current, but then all these resistance values are kind of low. So this battery, this circuit's going to draw 8 amps out of it. So that's sort of that first initial answer that 8 amps are going to come out uh, out of the battery. So no matter where you want to draw it, sort of whether it's over here, if the switch is open, or any of these circuits here, I'm definitely going to see 8 amps flowing out of this battery here, feeding the circuit when the switch is open. Uh, what else I can sort of figure from this is that if you look at this circuit here, remember this is still the 24-volt battery. So there's 24 volts sitting here. That means there's 24 volts across this 6 and 24 volts across this 6. That means it's fairly straightforward then to figure out what current must be going down either of these branches right here because if there's 24 volts across this resistor here, then the current that must be going down this branch here is just an application of Ohm's law, 24 over 6 or 4 amps. So the current down this branch where this red arrow is right here would just be 4 amps. And this is also a 6 ohm resistor, so the same sort of analysis would apply we would get 4 amps going down. So when the switch is open in the case here, remember the 8 amps total current draw then is split between two 4 amps going down either one of these branches. And it's probably kind of straightforward to see here because this is a 3 and 3 and a 6 and this is also a 6. So 6 ohms here and 6 ohms here, each one's going to get 4 amps when the switch is open. Uh, the potential difference across A and B is, is not so uh, well automatic, I guess. But if you go back to the original circuit now and you know that there is uh, 4 amps flowing through this resistor, and 4 amps flowing down this one right here, the voltage drops can come from Ohm's law once again. So over here, the, the delta V across this 3 ohm resistor is Ohm's law. It's going to be 3 times 4, or just 12 volts. So current's going to come in, and as it goes down this junction, it's going to be at 24 volts right here because it's, that's connected to the positive terminal of the battery. But as it drops 12 volts, in this case here, the voltage at point A is going to be 12 volts because it drops by 12 across its resistor. So by the time it gets to this point right here, it's at 12 volts. 24 minus 12 is just 12 volts. Same sort of analysis can happen over here. If I know there's 4 amps going through this 5 ohm resistor right here, then the voltage at B must be 24 minus, because it's 24 volts all along this top rail right here. And as it goes down, it drops across this 5 ohm resistor. It drops by 20 volts, because 5 times 4 is the application of Ohm's law right there. That's 20 volts minus 20. So the voltage at B there is just going to be 4 volts. So I see then that the delta V between A and B is just going to be 8 volts when the switch is open. Okay? The circuit changes a bit when the switch is closed here. So what I'll do is I'll just sort of erase a few things to see if we can maybe work on that. In particular, the 8 amps probably won't be there anymore, and these 4 amps won't be here anymore. These delta Vs are definitely going to change. And now when the switch is closed, this is like a straight path in here. That's what the circuit sort of looks like now. And I can just fix up some of my resistance values there. The 24 is still in there. The resistance values are all the same, just that the circuit is really different now when the switch is closed. So we'll make a little room for ourselves and see if we can figure out what's going to happen in this case here. So if we look at it really carefully, now it looks like when the switch is closed, it looks like the 3 and 5 are in parallel now. So here's that 24-volt battery now. Now I can come in here and draw the circuit sort of something like this. You can draw a little more familiar. So there's that wire right there, the switch being closed. I'm just sort of reorning the resistors, not electrically, 
just geometrically, which is not the important characteristic about the circuit, but it makes it look a little more familiar to us. So I say when the switch is closed, this is what the circuit looks like now. So what it forces to happen is the 3 and the 5 are still there, as are the 3 and the 1, but the 3 and the 5 now are in parallel, and the 3 and the 1 are in parallel, so the circuit can be redrawn something like this. There's still the 24-volt battery here, and now they'll have one resistor there, and another resistor in there look like this. Now the 3 and the 5 in parallel come out to be sort of some funny numbers here, but this will be like 15 over 8 ohms, and this one over here will be 3, 4, 7 ohm. Okay, that's sort of what happens when you combine the 3 and the 5 in parallel and the 3 and the 1 in parallel. So you get two resistors like that. And uh, just taking another step here, the fractions are a bit awkward for a calculation here, but these two now are in series, and they can be combined there. If there's a 24-volt battery like that, I'm talking about these two in series can be combined to a single equivalent resistor. I believe I'll get something like 2.6 ohms for that. So just like the last circuit, when you got to this point now, you can figure out what the total current draw must be in this circuit here using Ohm's Law, because I is 24 divided by 2.6. So I get that the total current draw in this is something like 9.2 amps. So in this particular circuit, when the switch is closed, if you go all the way back up to the top here, the way we've drawn here is this battery here is now sourcing 9.2 amps out through the system. There. That's the total current draw. So you can run this through a similar procedure as before to figure out the, um, I think, the current in the resistor. Or let me just check one more time what it's asking for right here. Um, yeah, that's the current in the battery, so we have that, but now it wants a potential difference across these two points. So that could have come very quickly at the very beginning of this analysis here because, look, when two points are connected by a piece of wire the way they are in this particular circuit here, wires are R is equal to zero. There's no potential drop across them in any way. So in this case here, the V at A would be equal to the V at B, or delta V A B is just equal to zero. There's no potential difference across points A and B. And indeed, you can see that the way we've drawn the figure later on. Like, this point right here is all of this copper just compressed down to a line here, and there's just no point. Like, if I came in here with a voltmeter, suppose I had my voltmeter, it looks like this, a little screen on it. If I took one of my probes, I'd have to put it in there, and the other probe, I'd put it, like, right next to it. But the same point now, when they're connected by this wire, so the potential dif difference between them must be zero. And we needed that fact because we said this group's in parallel and this group's in parallel, so this point must be at the same potential to make that parallelism between the resistors occur.